Hey Greg, so we're now inside the kiln. Yeah, so right. what are the control factors that you're using in here? This kiln's between loads at the moment. We're preparing another load for this one, so it's standing idle, uh, which is something we don't like to do too often, but happens occasionally. Um, we're, yeah, we're inside a kiln. This is a, about a 50, 60 cubic metre, two container load kiln. Um, it's a, a system which is, uh, in, in cost terms, costs around about a half of the cost of a conventional kiln, despite its more highly sophisticated control. The reason for its low cost is it's very light um, aluminium frame. It's not bricks and mortar, which is a great virtue in talking about portability too. We can take the kilns away to the, dis disassemble them quickly and rebuild them elsewhere and take them to the timber rather than carrying the timber to it. That's going to mean, mean a lot in future. But looking at the, the system itself, I'm holding a sensor in my hand. There's one on each side. That's normally located in the stack. That's measuring temperature and humidity. Up above the, this timber cover here, which is normally uh, stretched out over the timber when it's in operation, um, there's a series of circulation fans up top and a water misting system that comes on automatically to increase humidity. If you look down here, well, at the solar inlet, there's a pump in there that sucks air from the kiln, blows it into the cavity between the black plastic and the and the clear through these ducts, transfers it across the top of the kiln, out over the other side, over here, and it comes out through this duct here. You can feel that at the moment, we've got temperatures there of around about 55 degrees coming out of there at a rate of about enough air to kill, fill the kiln every three minutes. So that's producing one hell of a lot of energy. The, um, the structure is also stiffened when it's in operation by the bracing systems. The braces crack, lock against the timber, give it extra wind loading in, in high storm areas. So the okay, and this is all on solar energy. That's right. All operating on solar energy. Of course, you've got you've got provision over there for uh, ducts uh, for the gas heating. If we're running pine with a hell of a lot of energy needed, we'll run run the heaters and we'll typically run on around about 10% of the energy of a conventional pine kiln. So the rest is provided by solar, uh, which is a pretty handy situation given the cost of energy these days. So in fuel efficiency terms, compared to a conventional kiln, what sort of cost factors would you be looking at here by comparison? Well, there's, there's all sorts of different drying, hardwood and so on, so you can't just answer that simply, but basically, in, in the simplest way of, of, of saying, in a, in a place like Melbourne, where the, we've got a temperate climate, there's nowhere near as good as some of our northern climates and some other places that are interested in this technology. We're looking at around about anywhere between zero to 30% of the heating energy compared to a conventional kiln. And that's drying as fast as a conventional kiln. If we want to take a little bit longer, we can use no solar energy, benefit by the fact that it's a low capital structure and still be further in front. So it's a very flexible system. So you're talking savings between 70 and 100 percent in the energy costs, absolutely. Fabulous. Thanks and that can be in, in drying. That can be 30 to 40 percent of the total process cost. When you look at the cost of the structure being half of what a conventional structure is, that's normally around about 20 to 30 percent of the cost. So we've halved that again. So the com combination of energy savings and the cost of the structure, the low cost of the structure, let alone the low maintenance, plastic doesn't rust in acid environments, uh, neither does aluminium. And it doesn't delaminate like laminated panels and the brick and the mortar doesn't fall out as a consequence of the heat. The collective advantages are massive in terms of the overall cost and drying after all is one of the biggest costs in timber processing. Okay, I think it might be time for us to get out of this sweat box. Yeah.